All right, next up we have ZJ who will be talking about uh, faster sorting and group by operations. Uh, thank you. Um, I assume everyone's hearing me okay? Yep, okay. Um, so I, I work in the data field and uh, as a data scientist, uh, I mean, I, I spend 80% of my time manipulating data, so I thought it makes sense to be really good at um, doing that. And this is the problem I want to go through today in the Julia ecosystem. So basically, I have a data set on the left-hand side, and I'm just grouped by the ID column and sum up the value. Uh, the value. Uh, and on the right-hand side is the result of that group by operation. So this is really what I'm trying to go through here. Um, now, in the data uh, space, I think data tables from our ecosystem is actually one of the fastest, and they have published a lot of benchmarks online. And as you can see, basically, um, it's just really it's the fastest uh, package out there for doing group by. And recently, they've added the uh, Julia's data frames to the, some of the benchmarks, but for some of the bigger data sets, it sort of ran out of memory. But uh, I brought in some examples where Julia is actually isn't doing all that bad, but I, it's, it's nowhere near as fast as data table, our data table for many of these operations. Um, I want to investigate a little bit about why. And I think the secret to uh, data tables uh, speed is really this sorting algorithm called radix sort, which can sort arrays in ON. Um, but uh, a lot of people, uh, when I was going through my computer science courses, I didn't I never learn about radix sort. I've always learned about like quick sort and things like that, which have like n log n performance. And I think uh, basically we think that that's the n log n is actually a theoretical limit for sorting runtime, but it's actually not true. It's only true for comparison based sorts. So you have to compare two elements and then swap them or do whatever you want. So how can you sort an array without compa uh, comparisons? You do it by counting. So for example, imagine you're sorting the digits 0 to 9. So you have an array of digits. The only values they can take is 0 and 9. So what you can do is just count them, count all the digits. And my claim is once you've done the counting of the digits, you basically sorted it. Right? So if you count how many zeros there are, that those zeros must go in the front, then you've effectively sorted it. And you can generalize that uh, to sort um, arrays where there's more digits, because imagine sorting a 64-bit uh, integer. If you want to count how many unique ones there are, you need to keep that the array that you need to keep to count it is 2 to the 64 long. So obviously, you don't want to do that. So there's some uh, generalized way to do the the sorting, which I won't go through, and that's radix sort. So you really do it digit by digit. So how about strings? So one of the things I found with um, string sorting in, in Julia when I first looked into it was that it's actually really, really slow compared to, to R. But then every string can be represented a bunch of zeros and ones. So once you convert them to a bunch of zeros and ones, you can start um, sorting, you can, you can sort them. Uh, so basically, uh, so therefore, it sort of boils down to how do you convert a bunch of strings to a bunch of zeros and ones really, really quickly, so you can start sorting them. One way to do that is by hashing. Uh, and, uh, but hashing, I found that there's no really fast way to do it um, in, in Julia yet for, for hashing strings, so maybe uh, the, there's a new package coming up that might help, but what I found was really useful was just to do this function. So basically, Imagine S, S was a string. I, I get the pointer of the string, convert it to a pointer uh, for integer 64, and this function got unsafe load. That just loads the underlying zeros and ones into, uh, into another big array. And then I can just use that, I can, sort, uh, I can sort the resulting array, because what this function does is it converts a string to uh, a number, eight bytes at a time. So if I have a really long string, I can just keep doing this keep sorting it, and I'll get it. And these are the benchmarks. Uh, so this is what used to, uh, what we used to have in the Julia space. And I've just sorted using two different uh, types of uh, data. So IDs, about eight bytes long, and then random IDs of 30, 32 bits long, uh, 32 bytes long. And as you can see that uh, using the radix sort implementation in Julia is actually a lot faster than base. 
and this is implemented in this sorting lab.jl. Uh, and there's some more benchmarks. So if your strings are a bit, uh, uh, this is a benchmark on the sort perm, which is gives you the order of your uh, strings instead of sorting them. So when you have two columns in a data frame, you sort the string, but instead of sorting the string, you want to return the order of the string so they can reorder the whole table in that order. So this is when you use something like sort perm. Uh, and the other thing that I've sort of applied radix sort to is um, one of my first contributions to open source, which is in this stats base uh, library. So in that, in that library, uh, there's a count map function. So if you do a count map, uh, on something that's uh, integer eight, uh, it's going to be really, really fast because underlying it is using radix sort to to sort it, uh, and it's actually a lot faster than than the first implementation of it. Um, and of course, if you want to do the group by uh, problem that I showed in the first slide on the second slide, basically, instead of doing group by, you can sort the data first. And then you can imagine, once you've sorted the data by the ID, then you can run a really efficient algorithm to summarize each group, um, because you can just linearly scan through the, the array that you're interested in summing up. Uh, and uh, over here, I'll just provide some more benchmarks for uh, what happens if you want to sort uh, like 10 million arrays of strings in different uh, packages and systems. So in the Julia Radix sort, which I've implemented, it's actually a lot, you can see a lot faster. And R is actually really, really fast when there's uh, 10 million strings, but a lot of unique values. But R has a special trick in their underlying system where they basically uh, do uh, interning of the string. So sort of R is a bit cheating there. But <laughs> if R didn't do that, uh, I think Julia with the Radix sort implementation can actually beat R quite quite well, uh, as you can see in these other benchmarks that I put here. Uh, so even though our data table is actually quite, you know, uh, really well regarded, there are definitely cases where Julia can beat data table, and it's again by radix sort. And the classic example, uh, it's not by radix sort, by counting sort, which is like a, one of the first things I showed. So basically, when you have a, a factors, uh, factors are basically uh, like an array where each of the elements can only take a certain number of distinct uh, values, unique discrete values. Data table actually doesn't have an optimized algorithm for sorting that, um, but whereas in Julia it's actually really easy to implement. Um, that's something that um, I've implemented in the count map for the stat space. Um, so these are the two packages that are more, a bit more experimental. Uh, so sorting algorithms contains radix sort for numerics. So if you if you uh, find that you're sorting a big array and it's taking a bit uh, lo longer time to sort, you might want to investigate sorting algorithms. Uh, if you want to sort strings, you might look into Sorting Lab, which is the package that I made, um, which is applying the radix sort for sorting strings. So, and uh, uh, hopefully we can just combine some of these functionality in the sorting algorithm, but as I dig into the research, there's there's some fundamental um, design differences between the two, so it's it's probably going to take a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, work to to incorporate into sorting algorithms. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, I just finish off by saying that uh, if you want to do uh, group by uh, count map in stat space is really quick for things that are uh, for types that are. Uh, less than two bytes, and then I'm trying to do some early prototype of group bytes using radix sort in this fast group bytes.jl. It's very experimental, so uh, probably not not ready for any serious use yet. But uh, I have some benchmarks on that. It shows that uh, you can sort by um, you can group by arrays quicker using the radix sort implementations. Thank you very much. All right, I think we have time for one question. Yeah, well, or, or if you can say it loudly. Um, can you integrate all of this in data frames? 
or the question was, can I integrate this in, into data frames? Actually, I checked the data frames implementation. It's actually very, very quick now. But I think um, the, the whole idea of fast group by was for me to test out these algorithms and then find a way to get them back to data frames. One thing that I found that in my implementation of fast group by .jl that's not really, really fast is when you want to group by multiple columns. Uh, and the problem is when you have one column that's a string, another column that's a numeric, uh, it's, it's a bit tricky to sort both of them using radix sort and then uh, manipulate the data frames and then make it work there. So one side, I figure out how to solve that, and I think it's ready to then go back to uh, data frames or have a, at least have a benchmark so that we can compare the, the approaches. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, we are now going to head out to the picture, so you'll go down out of the front doors and then take a left. Let's thank our speaker one last.